you know, chapter one, it starts off with, it's called uh, What the Trinity Wants. Um, because I, I feel like a lot of times when I get into prayer, I throw out my desires to him. And this isn't about us. Um, I'm actually, you know, in the flesh, I'm okay with just having my little circle of people that I like being around and who agree with me. Um, but it's not about that. It's about Holy Trinity, God, what, what do you want? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There's a passage, a uh, verse in James that, that has really been hitting me this last year. James 4, verse 5, where it says, Do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, He yearns jealously over the spirit he has made to dwell in us? So scripture says, I want you to think about this. Talking about God, he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. So God, the father, I don't know if you ever picture him on the throne yearning for something. But it says he yearns jealously for the spirit that he's placed in us. Because this is a fascinating, fascinating truth that God wants to be one with us. I mean, that was Jesus' prayer. He says, I and them and you and me, may they be brought to complete unity. There's, there's something, and, and this is something I've only been thinking of for the last year or two. The fact that I was created, what does it mean that I'm created in his image? I mean, God is indescribable in so many ways, right? There's certain things we don't understand. Like we don't understand Trinity. We don't understand how could, how could you be Father, Son, and Spirit? How could you be one and yet somehow coexist in this e eternal relationship? So how does this happen? I've been trying to dwell on mysteries better because, because we live in this information age where you can just be constantly taking things in and you almost feel like you can't keep up with everyone you know because there's more news more stuff to know more facts to know it it kills that whole process of meditation mm -hmm. and dwelling and you look at what the early believers did they would take a truth and they would just sit and dwell on it mm -hmm. think about it like when's the last time you thought about being created in the image of a triune God? Mm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in perfect unity for all of eternity, and then they make us in their image. So, I think when I was younger, I would just think physical, like eyes, ears, nose, you know, whatever, the senses. And it's like, no, it's about the very essence of who I am, like that God made me in such a way that I could be one with him. He didn't make that dog or the cat, you know, in a way that they could be one with God. But he says, when we make man, let's make him in our image. And then in the word, he says that he, he made us in such a way that we could be one with him. I, I mean, those words, like Jesus says, I, I will come into you. My father and I will enter into you and we'll eat with you. You know, we love a lot of us when we got saved, that passage of I'm knocking on the door. And if, and if you'll just open the door, I'll come in. I'll dine with you. Like, like there's something about and now he's yearning jealously for the spirit. Like God wants to be one with us. That is crazy. And I'm made in such a way that I could have this perfect unity with him. And then he continues and says then that there is a way that we have this bond with him and now we can have that oneness with each other. 
But first things first, we can't just seek this bond with one another if we're not really one with God himself and really have dwelt on that truth. Like what the person who really gets that, who really gets to the point where, are you kidding me? You know, like when Jesus says that you are my body, he says, no one, no one hates his own flesh, but he nourishes and cherishes it just like Christ does the church because we're members of his body. I don't know the last time you marveled at that and really just sat in the presence of God and just go, are you kidding me? I'm one with you right now. And so here's what I want us to do right now is um, Mercy actually wrote a song about this. It's her first worship song. And based upon this chapter, and I was like, oh, can you play it and just let us meditate on the words of that? And so she's going to play it. And then right here and whoever's in the room with you, after she's done with the song, let's just pray for different people in the room and pray for God to be one in them. You know, you can pray for Sarah, however, however you feel led. But I wanted us to meditate on that truth personally um, as Mercy sings a song. Joy. 
at the truth of this Emmanuel, our God wants to be with us. Stand in awe, the God you want to be with us.